Well, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well on this beautiful Friday morning, at least here in the Midwest. Uh, a few things set up here. Okay. Morning, Hector, Julie, Daryl, Jim, Joe, Tom, Art, John, TD. Uh, only names I can see. I can only see so many names there. Um, hey, remember today we start earnings. Um, some banks, what was it, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, City, I believe. Um, probably others as well, but those are just ones that come to my mind. Um, Monday is a holiday, so... Um, it's very important to make sure, you know, don't, don't get caught in the, you're holding a bunch of positions at the end of the day. And then, you know, Saturday morning rolls around and you realize Monday's a holiday and, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have held that position or the other one. Uh, so, uh, just remember by the end of the day, um, uh, unless you want to hold them for three days, uh, you know, be a little careful. I get asked often why, uh, I don't like to hold too many over one a weekend and then uh, for more than just a normal weekend, more than a Saturday, Sunday. And really, it's just so I can sleep at night. Um, I, I get where I hold, you know, too many holidays in there. And then what happens is it, it just ruins my evening, uh, my sleep time. So uh, I just want peace of mind is what I want. Uh, and so it, I find it better that I eliminate some risk. And that is the reason why uh, I lighten up on weekends. And um, I really lighten up on three-day weekends or, you know, longer. So it's just peace of mind. Yeah. Okay, so um, all the trade ideas today are going to be on the short side. Uh, we have been this past week, two weeks, even longer, we, we, we've been building our watch list, um, a lot of long charts. So I think in lieu of what the market did yesterday, what it's doing pre-market here, we probably ought to focus on some shorts. Um, so, uh, we're going to do that. There's just one long in there and we'll talk about that one. Okay. So let's take a look at the spy here. And yesterday we ended up with a with a evening star. We rallied from a hammer up, uh, we dogied, and then um, bearish engulf up here. So a bearish engulf, that, it's that too, and it's also an evening star uh, pattern here. So uh, we failed the trend indicator. The trend indicator are the, is the red dots, green dots. And uh, what I mean by failing it, is we were green price above the dots and now they've moved below the dots so that's failing it uh, that's putting us in a in a bearish attitude here we've also failed the 50 period moving average and we're below the t line on the spy we also have man just a lot of little bad news today isn't it uh, we have a bearish head and shoulders that we've been trying to get around that's what that's what we wanted with the bulls here. You know, we wanted the bulls to work themselves around that and get above it. And uh, they're just it, it they're not doing it for at least for now. Um, I think it's very important that we trade with the market. And uh, we've got the scans during the day. Yesterday we talked about it. The day before we talked about it. You know, with some new scans we've got set up. We'll certainly talk about it today. Uh, so right now, going into the to the day, I don't see any long trades available. Now there may be some long trades set up there, I'm, and I'm, I'm I'm almost sure there will be. Um, the thing of it is, is if you are um, if you are putting conditions in your favor to make money in the market, I personally believe one of the conditions is the directional of I'm going to call the market because the SPY is my main market. Somebody else might use the diamond. Somebody else might use a combination of diamonds, SPY cues. Uh, so it's whatever you do. That's what's important. It's not what Rick does or what Dan or Julie or Paula does. It's what you do. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. 
Uh, targets on the SPY I'm looking for uh, is 456 or uh, 65. And, you know, there's no secret to doing this. Th this is just not a secret right here. Um, you've got this low. You've got this low right here. It just makes sense that there's a, a good probability that we test that area. If we fail the 456.65 area, then what I'm looking at is uh, right here at 452.50. You know, I, I, could, I could just as easily put this number right here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to put it down on this low. And then you can see we kind of come on top of this little this little hump, this little rise in price right here. So uh, that may be a good area. And then also we can't, you know, look away from these lows here. But it's like climbing down a tree. So if we're on the top of the tree, the very top, we're going to have to go down branch by branch by branch. So if we find stability, say on this branch, and the bulls start buying, well then we're not ready to go down the tree yet. So follow price, watch sp spots in the chart that just look like they, um, uh, just common sense is what it is. That, that really, that's all it is, is common sense. Uh, if we're moving down, where do you think we're gonna move down to? The best support area you can find. And that's what I find right here at 456.65. If that doesn't hold, so on and so on and so on. Okay, let's take a look at some of these charts really quick. I'm going to start with it. By the way, somebody asked me the other day, um, because uh, say VXX here, VXX is on the top. Does that mean that that's a better, um, better trade than the others? No, it doesn't. Um, it's just simply the way they come up here. I can, you know, I can change these by, you know, the percentage change here. I, I can do that. So... Um, I, I can also do it uh, alphabetically, I think. Here we go. I can do it alphabetically. Uh, so, no, it, 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 there's no value to the order that, that these come up. No value at all. Also, too, I want to talk about something. And I'm going to mention this, try to mention this throughout each chart we look at here. I had a question from B. Bond. B. Bond. Uh, on the daily time frame... How far back do you look for support and resistance? Six months, one year, two years. So I'm going to do my best to every chart. If I remember to look at it, I'm going to kind of point that out. All right. Okay, so let's start with VXX here. Now, we did buy VXX yesterday, uh, very close to the close. And remember, if you are a member or a trial member, you should have received that here in the room if you, uh, if you were in the room. If you weren't in the trading room and you have downloaded the members app, now this is for trial members also, if you downloaded the members app, it would have, you would have been alerted on your smartphone as well. Okay, so with VXX, a couple of things here. Here, I'm going to do it this way. There we go. Uh, I, you know, a little bottom here, nice little double bottom. We also have a uh, nice little uh, morning star pattern yesterday, right in here. So bought this yesterday, and then you can see this morning it's moving up. As far as targets, what I'm looking for is um, or profit zones. Um, I see something up here, the high profit zones around 2180, around 2180. If um, if that works out, and there's probably going to be a little choppiness, then we could see something up here at uh, 24 and change. And then again, you know, there's probably going to be a little, a little working through uh, that area, and then possibly up here. That's pretty darn bearish in the market right there. That that's pretty darn bearish. Um, and I'm not necessarily that bearish. I'm just I entered a position. I see it going higher, and I just put some lines up there where I think it might go. Uh, at any given time, it could fail. We could, we, could, we could rally up to right here and then fail. The, the sellers step in on VXX. The buyers start stepping in on the market at any given time. This is why 
we focus so much on watching price. Very important to watch price. Use those stops. So those that got into VXX, it looks like we're making a little bit of money this morning on the open right away. If we can get some follow through, even just to the 50 period moving average, or maybe just to this high right here. Uh, what is that? Uh, let's see. From, from the current price up there is uh, another 6%. So uh, we're looking good here for those that got into VXX. Uh, Costco is looking like a short. Now, like I said, we, we've, we've got a watch list uh, for the longs. We build on it every single day. And I think it's time we start building on a short list. So uh, here's Costco. You can see the trend indicator has gone from, there we go, has gone from green to red. All right, so that's one key sign right there. We have a blue ice failure. We've got a bearish H pattern setting up. A lot of little things going on with price here. You got to admit, you've got a topping, um, kind of a topping looking chart. So what I'm looking for is uh, maybe a buy in this area. And this is not where you make a lot of money. There's only 4.8%. And that's just from up here. I didn't even try to, I, I just put a box in there. Uh, the money comes in when we start moving below yesterday's low, uh, then I see 7.5%. And again, that's not any rocket science. It, it, it's not. Um, and then from there, I see something down to 442, another 6%. So if you combine those, you know, you're in the 13, 14, 15% area with the stock. That's a 30% on an option. Uh, fastly, is looking, uh, looking like it has more uh, downside to it. So uh, Fastly, that's a jump right there. Um, I'm going to go to a weekly chart. So uh, here's to uh, a B Bonds um, question here. You can see this flat trading right there. You've got multiple touches. So I went to a weekly chart just so I can see more of the chart. The weekly chart has no value for this chart other than, for me anyway, other than I get to see the whole picture. I get to step back and see the whole picture. So as I look at this chart, I'm looking for a reason for price to stop going down. And it looks to me like 2450 is a good reason to stop going down, at least for a short period of time. And then uh, with more failure, I see around 20 bucks or another 25 and a half percent down here uh, at these levels right in here. Now, I, I it, n noth, noth, nothing just, well, it's pretty rare. I shouldn't say nothing. You know, we're just not going to go boom like that. So we could move down a little bit. We can pop up a little bit, play around here like that. Man, it, it, it could even sneak up and get a little green uh, before it moves down. So, um, these are just areas we're looking for. We want to wait for the proper setup for an entry. Um, that could be maybe, uh, um, it, it could be here at the open. Um, everybody's entry is a little bit different. This is what we talk about in the trading room and try to, you know, find ways to make good entries. Um, could be a pop-up on a 3H trap. There's several ways you can make an entry. Uh, failure off of this little doji here. Uh, might get some folks in, so uh, fastly looking a little short. Pin, pin might be heading down a little bit more. I see 25% followed by 33%. Um, we've got a nice downtrend here. We rallied up, failed, and it looks like we're coming back down. The overall trend is moving down. And in all downtrends, you're going to have these little relief rallies. And they get, this can give opportunity for buyers as well as uh, breaking through uh, some resistance can give, uh, support, excuse me, can give opportunity to buyers. So, uh, for instance, if we just put a line right here and you take this date here, January 10th, that's this, that, that's this candle right there. We start breaking through there logically, again, just common sense. What's the next area, maybe? How about the low of December 17th? So we might be looking at this 4340. Um, I, just, I just put two simple boxes up here. 
we have to watch these little minor support areas. Um, let's look at that weekly chart. Uh, so for my person who asked my question here, you can see how I went back and maybe found some support over here. And I, and I don't know if, what I did exactly. Here's a two-day chart. And I need to be able to see it. I don't see it, so I go to a three-day chart. There you go. I can see it on a three-day chart. So you had bullish candle, that, that consolidation and breakout right there. That's where I've got a pair of lines, right in there. So um, that's what I'm looking at for the downside uh, for possible support or a profit zone. And then we just run downhill from that. Snap. I kind of like this snap one. I got to tell you, this looks good. Um, so I'm seeing um, um, about 30% and then maybe another 14 or so percent. See that gap right in here, over here on the left, right there? Um, man, we start getting, uh, we, get, we get through that gap, and that is right there. So if we can get through 3470, that fills that gap in there. And from this top, which that's what I'm looking at, I'm not looking to wait for 3470. I'm actually looking for an entry up here. Uh, that gives me about uh, almost 30%, and then again, followed by 14 or so percent. And again, just looking over here at where price has created some kind of an argument. PANW is another one. Um, so PANW, here we've got a high. Let's put this up here. We've got a high, and we come up here, and I consider this a failed high. Now, I, I know that if we were to do that right there, right there, we actually broke out, right? But come on. I mean, this thing trades 3.9 a lot. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. You know, 3 million shares, 3 million shares, and um, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's like herding cats through a door. Um, I've told many traders this before that, Stock market doesn't, two, two plus two does not equal four in the stock market. So if we're looking for exacts, holy moly, uh, you better write with a pencil, not with a pen, because that is, I consider, an absolute failed high. It tried and failed. Um, so from here, we made a, a high, a low, a failed high, a lower low, we tried to move up a failed high, and now we're making a lower low. Perfect example of a short trade setting up. We're below the trend indicator. We're below the 50-period moving average. Price is below the T-line. T-line is below the trend indicator. The trend is the trend, and it's pointing down right now. I'm looking at uh, another 7% to the downside, followed by 15.5%, and you can see right there. So on the daily chart, I'm able to see everything as far as where possible support or bounce areas might be coming in uh, here at this 463 and then here at this 404 area. NVIDIA looking a little short. You can see how the trend in NVIDIA has been down. You can see the series of the the highs, the lows, the lower highs, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, nothing says that's going to stop until it in fact stops. So uh, a lot of traders, most traders are long traders. The majority of the traders in the, that, that work the stock market are long traders. So what happens is, here, or here's what could happen. Uh, NVIDIA comes down to 240, right? Uh, and I, I see that as a, a good target, another 10% down from about where we are this morning. So NVIDIA, NVIDIA comes down, it puts in a buy signal. You get all these bottom pickers that come in and chase it. This does not mean that this downtrend is over. Even if we do this right here, that does not mean this downtrend is over. But this is what happens. And traders pop into it because, um, you know, they're, 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 they don't, maybe they don't trade short or they can't make money trading short or, you know, whatever. 
and they're just itching to go along. So the first sign, the first sign of a little sunshine here, the traders will jump into this and then they think they're the smartest traders in the world. And at this point, they're just crazy bullish. Well, the closer we get up into this area, the more likely it is to turn on them. And now they're sucking air. It hurts. So don't, don't get sucked in by little, you know, the bottom picking by the dip kind of attitude that's out there in the market here lately. Because that usually will just eat your lunch. Um, looking at NVIDIA, this thing, based on what I see right now, okay, now that that could change a little bit depending on, on how far we move out and what the price pattern looks like. But NVIDIA, you don't get long on this till it breaks out over this, this line here. Uh, based on the chart that I see, that means all of this is given up. It's not even a trade. But like I say, everybody does it. Just be careful. The trend matters and relief rallies, while, a, while really good money can be made on relief rallies, you can't get complacent and think the bulls have, have turned everything around. Sorry, went a little long on that one. PLTR. Uh, I see a 10% move, uh, almost 10%, uh, almost a 19% move in PLTR, 1450, 1320, 11 bucks. And if you move over here, uh, let me try to go to a three-day chart. Uh, that's not going to work out too well. Uh, on the daily chart, it might be hard for you to see this bottom one. This should be easy to see right there. You see where price, uh, the buyers and sellers had a little battle. That's where I'm going to put it. Put the line. See how this dark candle, and again, this may be very hard for you to see. You can look at your chart and open it up. You can see the low of, what is that date? Uh, November 10th. That becomes an area. And then you see these multiple lows right in here, and then a, then a kind of a touch and a touch with two candles. Right there is a good battleground for price, and there's some pretty nice targets. And I love this one. I love game. I love the whole game AMC thing. Um, man, I, my, my enjoyment in the evening is uh, following some of the posts on social media about these kind of stocks. Um, I, I love watching it. And it, I, it's better than watching TV. Um, look, <laughs> I, I, th these were pumped up. Uh, these, these are basic pump and dump stocks, if you ask me. And they were, they were led around by the social media, um, people, um, uh, and the, um, the traders that sit in their armchair in the evening and trade. Sorry, I don't mean to, you know, I'm not trying to put anybody down there, but you got to take trading, trading seriously and you can't trade from your armchair listening to the social media yes and uh, so here's what i'm seeing right now after game has all been up GameStop, uh, i'm seeing some downside here i think it's time for game to come back to earth and here we go so 35 percent 56 percent 40 percent to the downside of 41 dollars um, right there you can see why here maybe you can't see why so i'm going to do this see where you had a little we, oops, that's the wrong thing. There's where we stopped. See there where we stopped, started, stopped, started, stopped, started here. You can see right through here, you had a lot of touches. You can see right there, you had a lot of touches, stop starts right in that area. So that makes for targets. Sorry, that took a little long today. I do apologize. I guess I had too many on there. I should have cut it back a little. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Friday Hit and Run Candlestick Trading Room. And... I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, the market will open up. Let's have some fun. And remember, our goal is to make money and to limit risk. Everyone take care. See you in about 15.